Good morning, my name is Mr. Peters. This is my sixth grade social studies class. And today we are interviewing abolitionist and suffrage movement leaders using Microsoft Copilot. All right, everyone, do we have our pencils out? Yes. Cool, would anybody be interested in passing out our papers today? Because Ari's hand went up first. Early bird gets the worm. There you go. So just as an overview of what we'll be getting in today, We'll be looking at, we'll do an overview of our social movements first, just so we remember what's going on, which is which. And then we're going to be using some Jenga blocks to determine which interview questions we'll be asking those leaders today. So I'll get you in some groups and we'll be moving around just a little bit. Once you get your paper, please put your name on it. When you get your paper, please put your name on it. So. On your paper, at the top, you're going to notice some key vocabulary. You're going to notice abolitionist, and you're going to notice women's suffrage. Would anybody be interested in reading the key vocabulary? I hear ladies talking, so which one do you want? You said you want it? Nope. Talia, go for it. Make sure you read loudly so everyone can hear you. A person who supported abolition. abolitionist. So again, an abolitionist is, is a person who supported abolition or the ending of slavery. And we're going to overview that in just a moment. Would anybody like to read the women's suffrage or women's suffragist? Oh, now you want to go for it. Be loud. The person who supported and worked for the right for women to vote and participate in elections. Yes, women's suffrage. A person who supported and worked for the right for women to vote and participate in elections. So students, let's look at an overview. So when we, look, when we look at the abolitionist movement, most abolitionists demanded the immediate freeing of enslaved African Americans. Yes, yes. Abolitionist leaders included both men and women. It wasn't just men, it wasn't just women, it was both. And they believed that slavery was wrong, morally wrong. They believed it was cruel and inhumane the way slaves were treated. And it was a violation of the principles of democracy. So abolitionists are going to work for the immediate freeing of enslaved African Americans. Any questions? Any concerns? Anything you need to get off your chest? All right, let's move to the next one. Let's look at women's suffrage. So the women's suffrage movement is going to start with something called the Declaration of Sentiments. That is their guiding document. They're going to declare that all men and women are created equal. Compete? Supporters believe that women were being deprived of basic rights, such as being denied the right to vote. When we talked about it and we took notes about it, you all know women could not vote until 1920, until the 19th Amendment. We only learned about the first 10. So until the 19th Amendment, women could not vote. They were also denied education opportunities, especially higher education. They were denied equal opportunities in business, and they were limited in their right to own property. Any questions? Any concerns? Anything you need to get off your chest? No? Cool. So on one side, we have abolitionists. Please don't do this to the board. On one side, we have abolitionists. They want to end slavery. And on the other side, we have the women's suffrage movement. They are working for the rights of women, particularly the right to vote. Everybody look at their paper. Does everybody see number one? Yes. Go ahead and circle which movement you would like to focus on today. You have the option between abolitionist movement or the women's suffrage movement. I'm going to need to group you all up so we might have to move that's okay go ahead and circle which movement we are going to focus on thumbs up if you circled which movement you would like to focus on thumbs down if you have not Kevin that's the best thumbs up I've seen all year that's a beautiful thumbs up all right on some tables, you see some Jenga blocks. I will have to move you all around so we can fit in our four groups. In your groups, in your groups, there may be more than four of you. That is A-OK. -okay. 
Go ahead and take your Jenga blocks out and start making your towers. Remember, there's three at the base. I'm gonna give us five minutes to make a tower. I think that's more than enough time. Why does it smell like glue over here? Yeah. Put it right here. Put all of them. Why does it smell like glue? Yeah. Oh, wait, no, these do smell like glue. You're building, there we go. Good job, ladies. Good job, ladies. Good job, y'all. The numbers don't have to be in order. You will notice on the second page, there are questions. There are questions on the front, there are questions on the back. What you all are gonna do is play Jenga normally. How you normally play Jenga, where you remove a block until it falls, right? And then the person with the most blocks, right? That's normally how I play. That might not be the right way. Wait, the person the with the most blocks? Hey, 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 hey. No, house thought, rules, don't get mad at my no, house rules. No, I thought you got to once you remove the block and it falls, that's who loses. That's how you play for it. Wait, really? So what you all are gonna do is you're going to pull a block. Let's use, just saying I know you can't take from the top, but let's take eight for an example. Whenever you pull your block, there's a number. Once you get your number, you find the question that relates to that number. So because this is eight, you find question eight. You would circle eight, and then you would continue to play. Does that make sense, everyone? You will notice that some of these numbers don't have questions. That's the point, keep playing, keep playing. Here's what we're gonna be doing. On the second page, you're gonna see questions on the front and the back of it. You all are going to play Jenga normally, where everyone goes and takes a block. This one has 12. Based off the number, that's the question that you're going to circle on your paper. Does that make sense, everyone? You play until everyone has three questions. Let's say you pick one that does not have a number. I picked 36. You can pick a question at random if you wish, or you can keep playing until you get a number that fits with the question. No, it's all about strategy. Never mind. Circle the one you have. If you want to choose that one, it's going to fall. Choose that one. Say your clothes. Yeah, it's not moving. Yeah, it's a different one. Yeah. Now, let's see. Did I nine? Oh, six. Woo! Grab it. It's eight. Okay, my go. Isaac, Isaac, is that better about Destiny? Go ahead. There you go, Desi. Okay. Oh, my God. Time to put the blocks in the box. Dr. Seuss will be proud of us. Blocks in the box. It is National Poetry Month. All right, here's what we're going to do now. In order to listen, you must be quiet. I'll wait. Oh, wow. Thank you. You are going to get out your computer. That is our next step. Please get out your computers. So the Jenga was to get our interview questions. Our next step is gonna to be to head on over to Google because it's not available to you in Clever, I learned that today. You all are going to search Microsoft Copilot AI and you are clicking the first link. Your screen will look like this. Cause all right, may I borrow your laptop? Your screen will look like this. So here's what we're going to do now. At the bottom of your paper, the directions for number three, it says once you have written or typed, because this can be an online assignment as well, written or typed your interview questions, you all are gonna head to Copilot. Are you at Copilot? Yes. Sound like you're happy to be there. Are you at Copilot? Yes. Yay! Cool. So on number four, flip it, flip the page. 
on number four. Based off the prompt, sorry, the prompt will be based off of what you selected on question number one, whether you circled abolitionist movement or women's suffrage movement. Whichever one you circled is the prompt that you're going to type into Microsoft Copilot. For example, if you circled abolitionist, you will be typing in the abolitionist prompt. Yes? If you circled women's suffrage, which prompt are you typing in? Women's suffrage. Women's suffrage, yes. You see? Women's suffrage. We should have typed our prompt in. Remember the questions you took on the front of the page. You wrote down from the Jenga game. Yes? Those are the questions that you're asking Microsoft Copilot. So the prompt is going to cause the AI to take the role of either an abolitionist or a woman suffragist. It should be either Frederick Douglass or Sojourner Truth. Yes? That's who you're asking your questions to. Based off your questions, you're going to get an answer. You will be writing that underneath number five. I'm only asking for two to three complete sentences. So what should you give me? Say it with your chest. What should you give me? Two to three complete sentences. You're going to get quite a, like, you're going to get an answer. It's going to be a lengthy answer. Okay? You're going to take that answer. Ugh. You're going to take that answer, and we'll be writing it here. Now, if this is not enough space, let me know. I can get you a sheet of scratch paper. Okay? When I take this, can I, like, split this in half? So it's not so long? Of course you can. Oh. Yeah, do your thing, homie. I gotta actually write something different than what I was supposed to do, so okay. I'm gonna restart this until Frederick Ducks like, can you take me yeah, like that? Okay. You need any help doing that? Uh, no. Okay. Not right now. Good. Corey, how are you doing? Good. This is a lot of words. These are a lot of words. Remember, we're using AI, so what can we do to maybe shorten it? How many sentences do we need today? You think I can give it to you in two sentences? Let's see. Give it a try. How we doing? Good. Do you need any help? You sure? All right. Keep working. How we doing, Kara? You need any help? Oh. Looks like we can use some of these questions too, if you wish. Kiddos, let it. Let the activity take you where it takes you. Even if it's a question that you might not have circled and might not have been yours, if the AI proposes a good question for you to ask, go for it. If it's information you would like to know, go for it. All right, anybody wanna share any information they found about Frederick Douglass and his thoughts on abolition and or Sojourner Truth and her thoughts or what she did for the women's suffrage? James, what did you find and who did you find it for? Uh, I found out that, that uh, Frederick Douglass is a good person who, who, uh, who has good ideals. Well, the, uh, uh, an example is, is, he, is uh, he said that when I asked him a question about uh, does he work with other groups, he said that, that if, if, if other groups are oppressed, nobody is. Did y'all hear that? Y'all yes. sure you heard it. Yeah. So when we're talking about the abolitionist movement, you didn't hear. So what he said was Frederick Douglass did work with other groups. They did not specifically list the groups. What was that quote again, James? Say it loud enough. Uh, he said, yes, if other groups are oppressed, none of, the, of us are truly free. Anybody find anything else? Maybe about women's suffrage.
We've been doing the work. We've been writing down our questions. We've been writing down our answers. Nobody did women's suffrage? Did anybody do women's suffrage? Bessie. Bessie, share something that you found. No? Desi, share something that you found. Be confident in your voice. It's okay. I'll echo. Share what you found. I'll echo. Sojourner Truth? Yeah. Oh, you learned that she was an escaped slave? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, what Desi found with Sojourner Truth is that, you back to your original seat. What Desi learned is that Sojourner Truth was actually an escaped slave who walked to freedom. So, Sojourner Truth is actually going to be the best of both worlds. She's going to be an an abolitionist, being an escaped slave, she also wants the immediate freeing of enslaved African Americans. And on the other end, she's also going to fight for women to have their rights, for women to specifically have the right to vote, amongst other things as well. One more person. Anybody like to share what they found? Sorry, my bang in the movie. Bubble gum, bubble gum in a dish. How many pieces do you wish? Pick a number one between one and 20. 15. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Kevin! Kevin is number 15. What did you find, Kevin? What, what did you focus on? The abolitionist movement or the women's suffrage movement? Abolitionist movement, what did you find? Speak up for me. Say it again. Speak up. They were driven by very various like So Kevin found that the Underground Railroad was used, which when we learned in class, we talked about it was not an actual railroad with the train passing through. It was a series of houses, businesses, and people that slaves used to get to the north? Do we remember? Yes? No? Okay, it's not the voices in my head. I know you hear me. Yes? No? Do we remember? He also talked about the motivations of doing, not the motivation of doing, but the motivations of being an abolitionist, of working to free the slaves. Anybody have any other thoughts they'd like to share? Be confident in your voice, you all. You do have a voice. What you got, Kazar? Say it again, a little louder. Abolition, abolitionists believe that slavery was wrong, not just on one level, multiple levels. Democratically, which we can say politically it was wrong. They said it was wrong morally. And then when you talk about socially, the cruel and inhumane treatment of enslaved African Americans. Thank you all for joining our lesson on the social movements here in U.S. History 1. Go, Go Seahawks!